Okay. Excellent. We'll move on to the next paper, so Bing Su. We will talk about uh, collateral and, uh, <coughs> and rent, informational rents. Inviting me here. And my paper is about uh, informational rents. Uh, our focus is uh, uh, can bank accept information rents uh, through collateral. So it's a, a bit different from uh, uh, what uh, usually uh, what the literature usually do. Uh, usually focus on lending rents. So here we have uh, collateral. So it's a joint work. Uh, my co-authors are uh, Holly Wang uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, Institute for Monetary Research and Adrian Van Rijkstok. At that time he was uh, at the Bank of in, uh, International Settlement and now he's uh, in, in Bank of Spain. So uh, a, a bit of a roadmap, uh, we, we do introduction literature review, uh, we talk about uh, data and variables, some main results, uh, we do some extensive uh, tests on uh, alternative explanations in the paper, uh, but uh, I, I won't go into detail here. And some of us will test then uh, conclusion. All right, so what is information event? So basically, uh, this bank accumulates uh, inside information through uh, lending uh, activities. So this creates an ad adverse selection problem facing outside bank uh, lenders. Then uh, the informed banks are in a position to request uh, harsher loan conditions. So the, the crucial condition uh, for information or rent is uh, uh, you must have some uh, information asymmetry among lenders. Without, uh, without it, it's, it's impossible, right? So uh, where does this uh, information asymmetry uh, come from? Uh, in the literature, we have uh, uh, two uh, important sources. The first one is repeated lending relationships. And the second one is relatively new. Uh, it talks about uh, bank market structure and how different market structure can facilitate uh, different uh, information asymmetry among lenders. So, um, as I said before, the previous studies uh, usually focus on informational rents through lending rates. And uh, uh, it is uh, usually, uh, we usually talk about uh, relationship lending and facilitating uh, information as asymmetry. Now, the role of bank market structure is, is not tested. And uh, the identification strategy is uh, cross-sectional variation using information of uh, transparency proxies, like firm size, age, and all these, uh, these type of things. And uh, the testing ground are, are usually advanced economies. So in our study, we, we have uh, uh, several differences. The first one is uh, we use collateral as uh, a channel for rent extraction. And the second one, we do both lending relationship and market structure and see uh, if they both affect uh, uh, information asymmetry among lenders and if they both facilitate uh, rent extraction. And finally, uh, our identification is uh, equity IPO. So we consider this uh, event as an uh, exogenous event that can equalize information among lenders. And, uh, well, our testing ground is, uh, is China. So why collateral? Uh, well, we have all the bankers here, so I won't go into detail here. Uh, anyway, the, the most important thing is collateral is, is important throughout the lending relationship. It's, it's not just like uh, it, it is in, important, the only way a loan is defaulted. Uh, it's, it starts from the beginning to the end. And uh, it is particularly important uh, in economies when, uh, when banks lack sufficient tools to, to price uh, credit risks. Uh, for, for example, like, uh, uh, like, uh, <laughs> like in China or some other economies that uh, uh, when you have uh, uh, strict uh, price controls, then uh, it's difficult to manipulate uh, the lending rates. So banks might, might seek to uh, have some alternative to, 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 to charge rents. So, and also in China, we have an important event 
and so on too, that holds loan officers responsible uh, for bad loans. So they have every incentive to, to charge uh, collateral whenever possible. Again, uh, why we focus on China? Uh, as I said before, uh, the, it's um, one of the most important uh, reasons we choose uh, China as uh, testing ground is we have a very strict uh, price control on lending rates. So banks might seek uh, alternatives. And uh, the second reason, of course, is um, uh, it's, uh, it's one of the largest economies in the world, but uh, we still don't have uh, many researchers on, on, on Chinese loans. So we, we try to provide uh, some, uh, some, some insights, uh, especially on, uh, uh, on determinants of, uh, of collateral, uh, which to my knowledge uh, hasn't been done before. And uh, the third reason is uh, we have a very segmented lending market. So this is important for our study because uh, we want to, to check uh, if uh, different market structure is associated with different uh, information asymmetries uh, among lenders. So we, we need to have uh, a relatively segmented uh, lending market that uh, have uh, significant variation across, across time. And the last reason is um, uh, because we use IPO as the information equalization shock. So it, it needs to be a relatively exogenous event, right? So uh, in, in China, this is more or less an exogenous event because uh, the approving of IPO really depends on the uh, CSRC, which is uh, uh, China Security Regulatory uh, Commission. Then, um, then it is um, uh, it is unpredictable if uh, if your application will be approved, and uh, you don't know when. Uh, that's that's the most important thing. You, you never know when uh, when it, it will be approved. And uh, as the CSRC also have some uh, uh, some very strange activities. So they, they, they suspend all IPOs from reason. And and you have no idea when that will happen and, and when the IPO will resume. So all this uh, is just to say that the IPO activity in China is relatively ex exogenous. So the main question we ask, the first one of course is um, do banks extract information around the collateral? And uh, the second is uh, if they do, uh, do this activity vary with uh, borrowers' information transparency and, and risk? And uh, the last question is, is uh, what are the determinants of collateral in China? So a bit of uh, literature review, and we, we will talk about uh, the identification strategy and our hypothesis. So um, the, the purpose of doing this literature review is just to show uh, there, there are many, many theories that uh, predict a positive uh, correlation between the relationship lending and collateral. And uh, we want to stress uh, what we want to do is uh, to test uh, if this posi a positive correlation is because of uh, uh, information asymmetry between the inside and outside banks. Uh, so uh, we have uh, the, the, the famous papers like, like Sharp and uh, Rajon, uh, basically saying that uh, information advantage of inside banks can hold up uh, the, the, the borrowers. So that gives the, these, these inside banks a, the chance to extract uh, information or rent. At the end, we will see a positive correlation between our relationship intensity and, uh, and collateral. But there, there are other, uh, other channels. Uh, uh, first one is uh, soft budget constraint. So basically, this theory says uh, relationship lenders extend uh, further credit to, to financially distressed firm in the hope of recovering previous loans. Then these, uh, these borrowers, they, they can foresee this, uh, this possibility then uh, they have some, uh, they will have less incentive to, uh, to reduce their, their moral hazard problems. So then collateral comes in in this situation to reduce this, uh, this moral hazard problem. And uh, the second channel is uh, bank seniority. So uh, uh, collateral improves the seniority of bank debt. So inside banks will become uh, a senior uh, claimant among creditors. So this incentivizes banks to engage in relationship uh, formation. Again, uh, so this theory will predict uh, uh, a relationship lending and uh, collateral 
will be a, a positively correlated. And the last one is, uh, is a more or less a mechanical one. So uh, banks, the, the minimize the unit evaluation costs of collateral <coughs> by extending subsequent loans. So once the collateral is placed, the next node, uh, if it is using the same collateral, uh, then, uh, then the bank don't need to, well, in some cases, they don't need to evaluate it again, then uh, the cost will be saved. So again, uh, this will predict a, a positive uh, correlation. So the second literature uh, is about uh, market structure and collateral. So again, there, there are two sets of uh, theories that predict the same positive correlation uh, between the market concentration and, and, and collateral. The first one is the one we want to test. Uh, in essence, it says uh, in a concentrated market, um, uh, information among lenders will be uh, more uh, asymmetrically distributed. So then in this case, we'll have a higher likelihood of uh, lender extraction uh, through collateral. So we have uh, several papers like Marcus, uh, House One and Marcus, and Booth and Thacker. So basically, all these theories say uh, uh, different aspects of, uh, of uh, how concentrated market can facilitate uh, information asymmetry among lenders. Let's, uh, for example, uh, I, if, if you have a very concentrated market, then the likelihood that you have to go back to the same lender is very high, because you have uh, you know, fewer outside, outside options. Then, uh, then this lender will accumulate uh, the inside information. <coughs> and, and, further, uh, and, and later on, if new banks want to enter this market, because the, the old bank has, uh, has uh, this inside information, then, Accumulated through time, and this is difficult for new banks to enter. So this deters uh, uh, a further uh, competitors uh, in the market, reinforce the um, informational advantage of uh, common banks. So basically, all the theories say so uh, in a concentrated market, uh, you have a higher likelihood that information of uh, of borrowers will be concentrated in, in a few a few in common banks. So this uh, gives the possibility of land extraction. But of course, uh, in a concentrated market, banks will have a higher market power. So this share market power will simply uh, request uh, the, the, the borrower to, to pass collateral, uh, regardless of uh, uh, information uh, uh, advantage. So what we need to do is um, uh, we need to find some identification uh, to differentiate all these uh, competing theories. So we want to say uh, the, uh, the results we find is because of uh, information asymmetry among lenders, uh, not because of uh, uh, other theories. So to do that, we, we use uh, the identification strategy, strategy of uh, Scanner in, in 2010. Basically, we use IPO as uh, informational equalization shock. So uh, IPO is an event that uh, you can correctly validate uh, in, uh, firm information. And uh, once the firm goes public, you have uh, regular financial reports, public auditing, or annual research, you know, all these uh, different channels to, to review information to, to, to the market and to all competi uh, competing banks. And uh, well, these will reduce the information advantage of inside banks, right? And um, IPO also has a, a secondary effect but because the market will produce a lot, lots of information. Then uh, any bank will, will try to free ride on, on, on this information uh, because you know, producing information is costly, and especially. Uh, when uh, all the competitors in, 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 in the market uh, know more or less the same uh, about uh, the, the borrower because of uh, the stock market, then you, you have uh, less incentives to, to, to invest uh, uh, extra effort. And, uh, well, there, there are some papers use uh, bond IPO as, uh, as informational shop. Uh, well, we, we focus on equity IPO because uh, uh, in, in, in China, most of the firms, they, uh, they have bond IPO after equity IPO. So the, the major information disclosure shock will be uh, equity IPO. 
So uh, that's it. Uh, that means uh, once we have this uh, IPO as information as shop, then the all, all the all the lenders will be more or less equally involved. So the previous information advantage accumulated uh, through uh, repeated uh, operation uh, more or less will, will, will vanish. Then uh, the information mon monopoly position of inside banks is reduced. Then the information and extraction will be less likely after IPO. So this is what we, we try to find. So hypothesis. The first one is, of course, uh, before the IPO, uh, information RAM is more likely, but uh, this effect will be moderated uh, uh, after IPO. This is for uh, lending relationship, and uh, we do the same uh, for, for market structure. Uh, and uh, the third hypothesis is, uh, if uh, information RAM extraction uh, varies according to the, the uh, the, uh, whether the firm is a safe firm or, or risky firm. So uh, the theoretical foundation is uh, Russian's paper, and uh, Hale and Santos, they, they have a, a, a similar test, but using uh, uh, lenders. So we, we try to see if this uh, pattern uh, uh, is uh, similar for, for collateral. All right, so our data is a, is a hand-collected uh, low-level data. Well, unlike uh, many countries, that uh, uh, central banks have uh, some uh, access to, uh, to 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 loan data. Uh, in China, uh, central banks or, or CBRC, uh, they, they have some data, but uh, they, they won't share with uh, outsiders. That's that's just impossible. We, we tried many ways to uh, to get uh, some private data, but at the end, you know, it's it's just uh, it's it's. Uh, I don't know, may, may, maybe <laughs> okay, I can, can get it, but you know, for us, no, no, but that's not possible. So we went to went through the hard way. We, we, we hand collect uh, the data from uh, uh, from uh, uh, firms' annual reports. Uh, the the uh, because the, the the sample firms in in, uh, in the study are, are are listed firms. So these firms uh, they started uh, applying for. Uh, for IPO and eventually they get listed. So we have some uh, long information uh, for these firms, uh, starting uh, uh, when they bef uh, before they, they were listed and uh, and also afterwards. So um, uh, in in uh, each firm has uh, multiple loans, uh, uh, most of the firms, and uh, the, the loans are from uh, multiple banks. At the end, we have uh, more than ten thousand loans. But we exclude some uh, recording errors and some uh, uh, some uh, other uh, criteria. At the end, we have like uh, more more or less nine thousand loans. So we have information on loan sites, uh, interest rate, maturity, and collateral, uh, and uh, we we know when the loan starts, and uh, we we know when the firm uh, become uh, become a listed firm, and we know uh, borrow uh, financial characteristics. And we know the lender of the of the bank, uh, the, the the name of the lender, and uh, we know uh, the name of, of the office. So basically, we know the, the location. But in, in this paper, we, we don't we don't do much with locations. But maybe in the future, it's it's a possible way to extend the paper. All right, the dependent variable that is uh, collateral. Uh, we only know if the loan is collateralized or not. We don't know. Uh, the value of the collateral. That's one important uh, uh, drawback for the office paper. So, the important, uh, the most important explanatory variables are relationship lending, uh, market structure, and IPO. So, there, there, there are many ways to define our relationship lending. Uh, we focused on uh, the, the definition of Scanlon in 2010. Uh, that is the total amount of loans that has borrowed from the firm's current lender divided by the total amount of loans borrowed uh, prior to the current loan. And uh, in terms of market structure, we, we use the concentration of assets of the four largest banks uh, at uh, provincial uh, level. And IPO, of course, is, uh, is, a, is a dummy variable. Okay. And we have uh, other uh, well, ordinary 
uh, uh, explanatory variables. So the main analysis we focus on uh, four steps. The first one we test if the correlation is positive or not. The second one uh, we check if uh, uh, the positive, positive correlation will vary depending on uh, the transparency of the firm. Uh, so if information is important, then uh, information around would be more difficult for, for transparent firms. And the third step, we, we use IPO as uh, informational equalization shock. And uh, the last one, we, we check if uh, informational rent varies with firm risks. So this is the, the equation. Uh, we predict the beta 1 and beta, beta 2 to be positive, but these uh, do not necessarily imply uh, informational rent because there are other competing theories predict predicting the same. So that's the result. If you look at uh, the, the first uh, two variables, you see positive co coefficients, and they are all very significant. And uh, that basically says collateral incidence increase with uh, both relationship intensity and uh, market concentration. And uh, collateral uh, are more likely for risky firms and risky loans. So I, I won't go into detail for our other variables. And uh, <coughs> informational transparency and uh, uh, random extraction. We want to see if for transparent firms, uh, the impact of uh, relationship lending and market structure will be moderated. Uh, we, we test if uh, the firms are listed in, 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 a, in a main board, uh, if they are uh, sale firms, uh, if they are large firms, then these are uh, presumably to be more transparent. And also we, we check uh, uh, if a firm followed by more analysts and a firm uh, with a higher percentage of institutional investors, they are assumed to be uh, more transparent. So the results are as expected. So for these transparent firms, the, the, uh, the impact of relationship lending and the collateral are moderated, if you look at uh, the uh, negative coefficients here. So the next step, we go with uh, the main analysis, uh, using IPO as informational shock. So the results are as is expected. So before IPO, we have uh, all positive coefficient here. So after IPO, then we have uh, negative coefficients. So basically, uh, after IPO, the impact of uh, relationship lending and uh, market structure are moderated. So the next one, uh, I, I won't go into detail here. So basically, conclusion is uh, for risky firms, informational rent is, is more likely after IPO, but uh, uh, the reverse is true for safe firms. <coughs> Alternative explanations, uh, I won't go into detail. Then uh, the, the final step we, we test, um, because IPO and uh, lending relationships, they are both endogenous uh, variables. So we, we want to test, uh, after controlling the uh, this, uh, this issue, our results uh, still hold. So we use a uh, uh, bivariate probability model, uh, model with uh, instrument mental variables. Uh, so the results are basically uh, solid. We do the same for lending relationship. So this is the result. Uh, if you look at the coefficient here and coefficient here, they are more or less the same as before. So finally, we do uh, other robustness tests. We check uh, if the results still hold with firm fixed effects. Uh, we check uh, if uh, including or excluding uh, the loan contract term uh, affects our results. And uh, with the IV probability model, we check, uh, uh, well, uh, that's another way to check the endogeneity of uh, other loan contract terms. Then uh, we do sensitivity tests uh, to uh, different samples. Uh, and finally, uh, we use different measures and uh, we add different controls. So all the results are, are solid. So finally, conclusion. Uh, so what we found is uh, collateral increases with uh, lending relationship and the stronger effect for informational opaque firms. Uh, IPO erodes uh, uh, information advantage. So at the end, uh, we have a moderated or insignificant impact of relationship intensity on collateral. Uh, moderated but still significant impact on market structure. 
uh, our production. So maybe a market power play some role. Uh, and uh, we we also provide some first evidence on determinants of collateral uh, for the the Chinese loan market. At the end, some future research, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, rent extraction for collateral may be more likely if banks lack sufficient to to price credit risk. So maybe a cross country investigation uh, could be useful. And uh, the second way is. Uh, Banks may choose methods to charge rents, either through lending relation, uh, through uh, lending rates or through collateral. Uh, that might depend on price regulation or monetary policy. In the end, uh, uh, because collateral is uh, highly related to, to legal and institutional environment, so a cross-country investigation uh, uh, with variations in legal and institutional environment uh, might be helpful. Okay, that's uh, my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And the discussant is Igor Ferotenkov. Well, first, a short summary of uh, this presentation. And in fact, uh, I have uh, included here two main points. Uh, first, uh, uh, the paper claims that collateral incidence increases with the relationship intensity and the second point is that collateral incidence declines after an IPO. And uh, in fact, I can say that uh, the, pa the paper is very interesting and it is uh, very inter uh, easy readable. There is a very good uh, literature review and there are many robustness checks. So actually I have started to believe to these results. Uh, well, but uh, I would also uh, like to endure several disadvantages. For example, the, the question of the paper. Just how does it sound? Basically, it sounds like uh, do banks extract international rents as well collateral or not? In fact, uh, well, uh, why not to ask banks? Uh, well, say people who work at commercial banks if they extract informational rents or not? And if they do, just uh, how do they do this? Uh, so, um, how would you say? Well, definitely, if you create a model, you will be able to publish in a good uh, paper. But if you find this information in personal communication, probably you, you will not. Uh, but, uh, well, just in general, for example, if I, I work at a commercial bank, just why do I need to know how do I extract uh, informational, uh, informational rents? Uh, also, I would like uh, to suggest you to improve the first paragraph of the paper. In fact, you start uh, uh, the paper with the question just why collaterals are important and basically with the literature review. However, uh, your main results are enumerated on the page number 8. And, um, you know, just if you submit your paper to a top journal, uh, probably they will read the first paragraph only and then the paper will be just rejected. They will not even read until the uh, page number eight. Uh, so I would like uh, to suggest you to put your main uh, findings uh, somewhere closer to the beginning of the paper. Then, in fact, I used to work at uh, one commercial bank 10 years ago and Basically, I was responsible for the credit risk management for the models uh, which, which I use for credit risk management. And I would say that probably, in, to my mind, your ideas are a little bit too complicated uh, for me at that time when I was at the commercial bank. Just, uh, how to say, just usually commercial banks, uh, they use uh, very simple uh, models for credit risk management. Just uh, how do they decide if there is a need for collateral or not? Uh, usually they estimate uh, the probability of default and if this probability of default is high then they uh, try to reduce the loss given default LGD well and then they ask for a collateral and th if this uh, probability of default is low then probably they do not ask for a collateral uh, and they use very standard models like uh, logit, probit, uh, maybe non-parametric me methods, uh, Kepman uh, model but uh, Actually, um, I do not really know if they put uh, well, informational rents uh, somehow, or well, informational asymmetry somehow to the models. Just uh, for me, I haven't uh, done this, but m actually I worked at commercial bank uh, 10 years ago, so I decided to contact my former colleagues and I can send your paper to them. <laughs> and they have given me several comments, which I will explain on the next uh, slide. 
In fact, the paper is a little bit too long and sometimes uh, certain points are over-explained. Um, I would probably suggest you um, to reduce a little bit of the certain explanations in the, in the, the introduction, because basically you uh, repeat uh, the same explanations twice, first in the introduction and then in the main text. And uh, maybe at least uh, these explanations in the introduction can be shortened a, a little bit. So, as I told you, I have contacted uh, my, my former employer and I asked uh, them how do they, how can they explain your results and uh, they told me that no, no, we do not uh, extract information over rents. So actually, everything here can be explained in the following way. Well, in fact, uh, commercial banks, uh, they do often divide the borrowers into two groups. Well, first, uh, there are borrowers uh, who like shopping. It means that they apply to many different banks and then they go there to negotiate better, con for better conditions. For example, they can take uh, an offer from one bank, go to another bank and say, well, look, uh, your competitor has offered me, me better conditions. And in such case, uh, they often uh, get uh, better, uh, better formal, uh, formal conditions of the loan. For example, they may get uh, uh, lower interest rates or maybe no, uh, no collateral. Uh, however, um, there are also um, another group of um, borrowers which uh, can be explained like stability lovers. Actually, um, there are many different reasons why, uh, why uh, just uh, stability lovers uh, can, well, why it can be beneficial for stability lovers uh, to work with one bank. Uh, so, Definitely, if the if the stability lovers, lovers do not go to another to other banks to negotiate with them about credit conditions, their uh, their loans are often collateralized. So basically, the first point of your paper can be explained just simply by dividing uh, borrowers into two groups. It's just uh, one uh, one group of negotiates with the banks, and often uh, they. Uh, do not have uh, collateral because of this, and other groups, the village lovers, or, or often uh, has uh, a collateral because simply they do not search for different variants. And uh, regarding the next point, just uh, it is very often that uh, firms before the IPO uh, they often take credits not because they need these credits, but they want to uh, have a good credit history. Just uh, for example, if you want to take a um, uh, credit for, to buy a flat, well, maybe it is worth uh, sometimes to take uh, a credit to buy a mobile phone and uh, to create a good history, credit history, and then you will get better conditions when, when, um, when you take a larger credit for your flat. Uh, so, in fact, this is a very usual thing that uh, firms before IPOs sometimes just simply take credits in order to make a good uh, credit history, and in this case. They're sure that they will repay this loan be simply because, uh, because uh, well, the, they're taking it uh, in order to make this credit history. And then they do not mind uh, to have a collateral in such a case. Uh, then, then uh, there can be also another explanation. Uh, well, just as I told before, just banks usually uh, have uh, very simple models uh, to uh, to model the probability of default, and uh, in fact, uh, well, the fact of IPO can be one of uh, explanatory variables. And uh, and um, uh, s for example, in such a case, it is very likely that, for example, just uh, you have two firms, and uh, the conditions, well, the financial indicators. Uh, of uh, these firms are very similar, but one firm uh, made an IPO and another hasn't made an IPO. And only because of the coefficient of uh, this in this regressor, just the bank uh, estimates uh, the PG at a lower level and doesn't ask for collateral in such a case. And uh, there is also another point uh, here. In fact, uh, small banks often uh, cannot afford a uh, good credit risk management. Uh, uh, well, so, so sometimes they can afford it, but uh, for example, um, people who work with credit risk management, they have 
they calculate, for example, PG, LGT, and so on for several hours. Then they go to a director or the board member and show these uh, numbers, and uh, they fi find out that, well, actually, um, uh, they have already negotiated about the conditions, and the decision was already made about the credit. Uh, so sometimes uh, people in the bank, uh, they look at the IPR as a signal that um, that the borrower is good. So basically sometimes we do not even look at the indicators, um, at the financial indicators of, of the firm, but just uh, they know that um, if, uh, if um, the reg regulator um, uh, has given a right uh, for, for a firm to make an IPO, this means that the borrower shall be good. Just um, usually um, uh, bad borrowers cannot uh, make an, an IPO. So this uh, sometimes works as a good, as a signal that the borrower is good. And as a result, banks uh, sometimes start offering their conditions, uh, well, uh, better conditions to this firm only because of this um, IPO fact. And even if uh, uh, banks uh, haven't tracked this firm uh, before. Sometimes they, after the IPO, they may suggest the better conditions to, to the. Well, they can simply come to the firm and uh, and offer better conditions than the other banks do, uh, just uh, only because they believe that this borrower is good. And as a result, uh, uh, competition for this borrower increases, and uh, and uh, definitely. Uh, in such a case, uh, the firm uh, may may reduce the level of collateralization of its uh, loans. So basically, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll allow two questions, two short questions. Okay, who first? Short. And very short question. So the theory is it's about access to information, more equal access to information. The alternative theory would be it's not about access to information; it's about external validation. If you go to an IPO, there's a due diligence process, and there's an external validation that's from its record, that's good. One way to disentangle both is at the time since IPO. We have data from 2007 to 2013, we have quite a few firms that were five, six years after IPO. If this external validation, the effect of IPO should go down, the longer it is going. If this access to information, it should stay the same. And then you can disentangle the both comparison. Okay, well, Bim, if you want to reply to the discussion, then I think we'll. Alright, I'm going to follow up in a very extensive uh, discussion. Uh, well, it's, it's great to have a, a, a real banking expert uh, from the Commission Bank uh, to, to have uh, some discussions on, on this issue. Uh, so, well, the first thing we did is uh, we, we went to, to, to bankers and we, we talked to them about, about our idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically, as, as you said, uh, they have no idea of what is information or what. So, uh, in, but they, they do, they, they did tell us that the relationship is ending. And uh, through this, uh, this process, uh, the information, the, the, the soft information, that's important for them. And also this, uh, this personal connections, uh, that is also soft information, that's uh, important for them. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's why we think it's, it's, it's possible. Because in, in, in the literature we have uh, uh, this, uh, this, um, uh, this soft information will have uh, uh, some impact on, on, on lending rates. And then we want to see if uh, it happens to, to collateral. Anyway. Uh, it's uh, it's probably more important uh, um, you know, as a paper, but uh, maybe to a practitioner it's, uh, it's, uh, it's probably not uh, that relevant. Uh, the, the second um, uh, the, the second uh, suggestion is to really organize the paper. Uh, we, we have a different version now, uh, then, uh, the introduction is much shorter. And I, 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 I hope, I hope that we will we have a, a, a Nice, uh, nice paper. And uh, the third uh, uh, important question that I want to answer is uh, uh, some banks they, they try to attract uh, firms that have been listed. Uh, well, this is um, uh, a, a list of mind you probably not uh, what was happening. 
because the, the firms in, in went to IPO are, are usually good firms. And in, 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 in my paper, all the firms are eventually listed. Uh, but the, the peculiar fact in, in, in China is once these firms, they, they, went, uh, uh, they went public, the, the, the financial performance deteriorates uh, a lot. So we have some, um, you know, maybe some manipulation uh, to go to IPO. Uh, so at the end, uh, after IPO, the performance is, is, is not that than before. Uh, and uh, so uh, the banks, they actually know it. So they wouldn't consider IPO as uh, an indicator that the, the, the borrowing is, uh, is very good. And uh, the, the last thing is, um, uh, because IPO in China is, is really unpredictable, we have no idea when your uh, application will be confirmed. So it's difficult for, for these firms to decide, okay, now I need to borrow some loan to show some uh, good credit uh, history. It's, it's just impossible. Yeah. Maybe in some other countries it's possible, but in China, because CSRC suspends uh, uh, IPO process for, for eight times during this uh, assembly period. So it's, it's, it's quite difficult for them to follow these uh, strategies. And, uh, and for your suggestion, uh, I, I think that's very good. You know, I, I need to check uh, uh, if the VC factor uh, changes all along the time pass uh, after IPO. I, I would all right, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I think now we've come to the end of the, this session, only nine minutes over time, but uh, I think the discussion flowed nicely, so that's good. And uh, I guess time for coffee break now. Thanks.